Borrow up to 40 grand to pay off your credit card debt. Lendingclub.com slash sports. Lendingclub.com slash sports. All loans made by Web Bank. Member FDIC. Listen, you're always pretty secure if you have a job, if you're outperforming your contract or you're outperforming what somebody's paying you. If you work at a company and they're paying you 40000 bucks a year, but you're really doing the work of somebody that should be making double that, they're never going to fire you. Those are people that keep their jobs forever. People that are outperforming their contract. If a company pays you $100,000 and they look at it and go, you know, a lot of guys around him doing more for less, then you're in trouble. So that's how pro sports works. Like, if we're going to pay a lot of money, you got to be worth the cap hit. If we're not paying you much, and you're outperforming it, i got to feel good about that. I'm reading a story. Cowboys this weekend face Carolina. It is a can't-miss game. And I'm reading a story this morning. Pressure on Dak Prescott. This is the big year. There's no pressure on him. Cam Newton is the number one pick here. Cam Newton makes $21.5 million a year cap hit. Cam Newton's coming off a weak year. Cam Newton, Superman. You go to last year, Dak and Cam. Dak was a better quarterback. Dak had a better passer rating. Dak had fewer interceptions. Dak had a better completion percentage. Dak had more yards. Both had six rushing touchdowns. Dak had fewer fumbles. Okay, the pressure in this game Sunday, it's not on Dak. Dak's making $725,000 a year. And yet, over the last two years, the Cowboys have won more games than anybody in the NFC. He's totally outperforming his contract. Now, the Cowboys, by the end of the year, will have to make a decision on him, and I think they'll make the right decision, the prudent decision, which is to pay him. But Carolina, for the last couple of years, first round running back, first round wide receiver, fire all their offensive coaches. Why? Because right now, Cam, as a number one pick, is a guy called Superman, is underperforming. Folks, he's never had back-to-back -back winning seasons. So if you look at the moves Carolina's making, firing coaches, new offensive coordinator, running back first round, who are they drafting? Wide receivers, bringing a running back from Denver. They're trying to get Cam to be worth that 22 large. Like, there's no pressure on Dak. Just go out. You're making $775,000, whatever it is. Are you kidding me? There's not a player in the NFL right now, not a single player that is outperforming his contract more than Dak Prescott. He is the single greatest value in this league, and they're not even a second place. No pressure on him. Dak, go out, play, do what you do, win nine games, you're going to get a great contract. Let me shift to this. One of the things I always complain about, I'm a guy, but here's something guys do that drives me crazy. And, Joy, you probably, you know this is true about guys. Guys do this all the time. not going to speak for women. Guys want to be right, not necessarily get it right. You start arguing with a guy, you give him the data, he just wants to be right and win the argument. No, get it right. Here's the data. You ever had a fight with a guy in an argument and, you know, he's, he's more worried about being right than getting it right? Uh, I, I, I got to be honest. I've been accused of this. <laughs> <laughs> but, yes, I've also had the argument with the person who has to be right, even though they have no facts and it's based completely off of their emotions. So, NFL, my whole life, there was a rule in the NFL. Take the points. If you have points, take them. The average NFL team is averaging 21.7 points a game. Atlanta last night, first drive, fourth down. Get the points. Just get the points. Instead, Atlanta's trying to prove a point. Their coaches are trying to prove a point. Matt Ryan can make things happen on fourth down. Okay, I keep seeing him try, and it's not working because that's not who he is. He's not mobile enough to run it in. He didn't have that arm to squeeze it in. Matt Ryan's a good quarterback, but you're trying, you're trying to be right. I, Matt Ryan is – get it right. Kick the field goal. If you kicked a field goal last night, first drive, all you would have needed for a field at the end of the game to tie it was a field goal. But you put yourself in situations where you had to get a touchdown late. It's football. 
This is not the Big 12. It's not 40 to 38 every Saturday. The average NFL game is 23-20. Since when do you since when do we consider field goals to be like a garnish on a plate? <laughs> you know, no, they're not the steak, but they're at least the potatoes. I mean, I, I'm not saying they're the steak, but they're not a garnish. Field goals matter. The Falcons' ego last night, we're going to prove to you that Matt can get it done. Just kick a field goal. This is Philadelphia. They got pro bowlers everywhere. First drive, you got points. Go sit down. Play defense. Lord. Kicking your field goals is like eating your vegetables. I know it's painful. I know you don't want to eat your vegetables. You'll live a little longer. What are you doing? What are you doing? Average NFL team scores 21.7 points. That's, that's a very good comparison, the vegetables and the field goals. Come on. God, it, this, is, it, this league's about winning games, not proving a point. If you're in Philadelphia, you drive against that defense, that defense is good. All the way down the field, you get a field goal. You won. <laughs> What's the old Wall Street saying? Pigs get fed, hogs get slaughtered. You get a field goal out of Philadelphia opening drive of the year. You should be more than satisfied. Stop trying to prove a point. Joy Taylor with the news. No, 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 no. Turn on the news. This is the Herdline News. All right, so Carson Wentz was eyeing week one for his return, but we knew, no, now know that wasn't going to happen, and we don't even know if he'll play at all in September. Before last night's regular season opener, reports are saying that Wentz won't be ready to play for a few more weeks. So, just as we would all expect, Doug Peterson was asked about that report after the game here's his response i have not seen or i've seen it but uh um i'm gonna i'm gonna you know um investigate that a little bit more and and, and see see where where and why and when that came out but um not gonna comment too much more on it. i saw him in pregame did you guys see the thing in pregame where he was running around he doesn't look like he's ready to play yet well he's obviously not ready to play yet or yeah. they, they would have him out there especially after what nick Foles looked like in that first half you know we were talking about this yesterday if you're Philadelphia and Peterson obviously knows what he's doing, just keep playing Nick until you go sub 500. Like if you if you play next week and lose, you're one and one. You play him again, you go one and two. Then I can see saying okay. But if you keep winning with Nick and you're above 500, just just don't I mean, play. If, yeah, if he's ready to go, he needs to be out there. But he's obviously not ready to go. Didn't look like it last night. I mean, they're not going to put him out there and risk him re-injuring it. That's the that's the worst case scenario. Then you have to go through an entire season with Nick Foles. Not that Nick Foles isn't a capable quarterback, but he's not Carson Wentz. Like we keep getting confused about it. You talked about it yesterday. Stop saying that Nick Foles and Carson Wentz are the same guy. We get it. He he, he won a Super Bowl. It's lightning in a bottle. But like, <laughs> relax. It's yes. Carson Wentz is, is the Philadelphia Eagles quarterback and Doug Peterson just got to get get used to getting asked about this because yeah. that's just going to happen until he's out there so the Eagles love them some trick plays most famously from the Super Bowl was the yeah. Philly special when Nick yeah. Foles caught a touchdown pass from Trey Burton and he caught another pass last night and the world freaked out about how bold it was to run the Philly special on banner night but it wasn't quite the same play as the Philly special so let's take a listen to Doug Peterson when he was asked about it last night uh, appeared to be the exact same play New England ran against you guys in the Super Bowl unsuccessfully. Are you aware of that? That's where we got it from. <laughs> we just we just put different people in the game. What do you call it? Philly Philly. <laughs> was the play. That's oh, what teams do by the way. I love it. That's what I So here's I, the here's the side by side. Oh look at that. Of the plays. Yeah. <laughs> Except for Brady did not catch it and Nick Foles did. There you go. <laughs> Philly, kind of, Philly. Kind of trolled him. Oh, it is 100% trolling. <laughs> you just look at Doug Peterson in the, in the press Smiling. conference. He can't help himself. It's it's so I, – I, I love it. It's 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 really petty. They're not ready to let it go yet. And, and on banner night is very aggressive. Yeah, it's good. It's so good. And, that, I, you know, I remember years ago talking to Bobby Bowden, the call foot, football coach, and he told me years ago, he goes, you know what I do on Saturday nights, Colin? He, this was when he was still coaching. He goes, I go home, grab a notepad, and I watch Oregon play, and I steal stuff because Chip Kelly and that kind of stuff. Right. He goes, Oregon does a bunch of crazy creative stuff, and I watch that late Pac-12 game. He goes, I know a lot of the other coaches are in bed. He goes, I'll watch that thing and steal plays. Coaches steal plays all the time. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's not surprising to me that they stole the play. It's it's just funny that everyone flipped out and thought it was the Philly special when in reality it's the play that Tom Brady infamously dropped the pass on, and they're running it 
on banner night in Philadelphia, right. an opening night of the season. So finally, why did John Gruden decide to come back and coach the Raiders after nearly a decade in the broadcast? Why? 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 Money? Money? It why? It could perhaps be $100 million. Yeah. Small detail. Or it could be Tom Brady. Gruden told Bleach Report he can't run. He can't jump. He's too old. He gets his ass knocked off, but he's a terminator. He ran me out of Oakland in the tough game. Damn, he even brought those bastards back in a two-minute drill to beat us in the driving snow. And here I am 20 years later. And guess who's still there? That's why I'm back. You said you like chip on shoulder guys, Colin. I John, do. I, is John Gruden a $100 million chip on shoulder guy? There's things about Gruden I like. I just think 10 years out of a sport that changes as much as the National Football League is really rough to just walk back. There's a lot of businesses. The, the post office today looks mostly like the post office 10 years ago. But there are businesses you just can't leave for a decade. A laundromat, a dry cleaner. My dry cleaner looks like my dry cleaner 10 years ago. But I always say Silicon Valley in football, you leave for a year. There's all sorts of changes. Rule changes, legislation passed. Good luck. I kind of don't mind going to the post office anymore. I don't mind. There was I a love time going. when it was like very annoying, but now it's kind of, you know, it's kind of nice. I go to the grocery store. You know exactly how it's going to smell. It's going to smell a little bit like ink. Yeah. You know? I, I go to the grocery store every day. It's going to take you 15 minutes no matter what. Um, oh, you like the grocery I store? I love the grocery You know what I call it? It's a freshness center. You go to a grocery store, everything's fresh. Vegetables, produce, everything in there is fresh. My refrigerator, you're like two days old, three days old. You go to a grocery store, everything's fresh. It's a freshness center. I've become completely Hollywood with groceries. You could just order them to your house. It's so nice. Not acceptable. It's so easy. I get in my car and go to my local freshness center. The freshness center can just come to you. (laughs) So nice. Joey Taylor with the news. Well, that's the news. And thanks for stopping by. The Herd Lie News. 30 minutes from now, the strongest blazing five I've ever had in week one. My NFL picks. Generally week one, I'm like, save your money. Go take your wife out to a nice dinner. Not this week. Chips all in in 30 minutes. And with that, I bring in Brian Cox, the pro bowler. He's been a coach. He's been a pro bowler. Now we get him at Fox Sports 1. So... I, I was saying this last night, is that there's different ways to win in football. Right. Um, I mean, Michael Vick won some games running around. And, uh, you know, uh, Tom Brady's a pocket guy. Eli's a pocket guy. There's a lot of different ways to win. Tony Dungy never yelled and screamed. We've had football coaches. You know, Ditka yelled and screamed. Right. And when I looked at Philadelphia last night in Atlanta, Atlanta is skilled and fast and slick. And that's Atlanta. <laughs> Philadelphia is tough guys. And I watched those two juxtaposed against each other last night. Atlanta's not a good red zone team. They weren't last year. Philadelphia is a great red zone team. They were last year, last night. And I think a lot of it is, Brian, when you get in that tight space, tough guys win. I don't know so much as that. I think when you, when you, when you look at the game last night, red zone was for sure the issue. Atlanta, the first drive of the game, when they got down there, the, the, play calls that they did where they tried to throw the ball to Freeman and then they came back and tried to run the ball wide. Not good play selection. As you just noted, that they were a bad red zone team last year and they said they worked on it all offseason. They're trying to prove they've improved. But look at the Jim Schwartz defense versus Atlanta the last three times they played. 16 points, 10 points, 12 points. He's figuring them out. So, you know, he may not be a head coach, but he's a great defense coordinator, yeah. and he deserves some uh, credit for putting it together. The other thing was that Philly ran that defensive line out there, and they really put in some work. Chris Long was excellent. Bennett showed up. Nada showed up. Uh, Barnett showed up. All those guys really played a major factor in winning the game. You know, um, you know, it's funny. This week we had a situation, and it's funny to listen to athletes. I, there's always been a rule in the mafia. You don't mess with anybody's kids or their wife. Right. There's always a rule in the NFL. You don't mess with guys' money. Right. Okay. Probably not good to mess with their wives either, but it's the money thing. <laughs> so the Steelers this week, you got guys ch- chirping about other guys' money and what they make, and TJ Hushman's auto came out yesterday and said, man, that's not, that's, not, that's not great. What do you make of it? I disagree with TJ Hushman's out of from this standpoint, now you're messing with my money. Because if I'm a Pittsburgh Steeler, Brian Cox, the, the player, I'm a team guy. And I've supported you all training camp. 
in your holdout. You got $14 million. That's your money, not counted. But now with you not showing up, you potentially preventing me from reaching my goal, which is the Super Bowl, which is costing me money. So now we're talking about my money. So I, I, I stand with the Pittsburgh Steelers. However, I think the Cleveland Browns beat them this week. You know, it, it, it is interesting. Very rarely do I think bad is interesting. I've never walked out of a bad movie and thought, you know, that was interesting. I don't think Cleveland's great. But between the Baker Mayfield thing, Tyrod Taylor's on the clock, Hugh Jackson's fighting for his job, they actually have some decent players. I got the Steelers drama. If you were going to say there's a bad team this week that will be really interesting, I'm with you on I think Cleveland if there's an every week in the NFL, we've got a couple of upsets. You like Cleveland to beat them. Why? I think this is upset alert. I'm sorry, Joy. I know you're from Pittsburgh. This <laughs> feels like upset alert for me. Todd Haley, what bigger grudge to go in there first game out to shoot as a coordinator? You know Pittsburgh's defense. You worked against them all last year. And you go in there, Greg Williams' defense plays well. They don't only give up about 17 points. You go in there, you got a a puncher's chance. Tyrod Taylor doesn't turn the ball over. I know many people want Baker Mayfield to be the starter, but you can't play a rookie against Pittsburgh and expect to win. So Hugh Jackson saying my job's on the line. I'm going with Tyrod. He doesn't turn the ball over. Todd Haley is the X factor. They're going to score more points than people think this week. You know the Patriots well. You were close with Belichick. You have said nobody made him trade Garoppolo. So let's get that aside. There's been reports people did. You don't believe it's true. It is interesting, though. Even in the Tom versus Time documentary, the mm -hmm. final episode this week, right? Brady came out and said, "You know, it, last couple of years this game's not as fun as it should be for all the games I'm winning. Mm -hmm. Can we at least acknowledge that after 18 years, marriages people wear each other out? Right. That that Bill and Tom are not the Bill and Tom of seven years ago, of nine years ago. That they're both legends." It's hard for – listen, Shaq and Kobe couldn't work together forever. Yeah, but you don't have that type of ego. Bill doesn't care who wins. He doesn't care who's the quarterback. Um, he just wants to win. And I would, I would, I would say this, and, and, and I hope it's not disrespectful. I think he'd much rather be coaching football and designing plays than making love. I really believe that. Really? I really – he's that passionate about it. The other thing about it is people don't talk about the Garoppolo thing. Why did he get so little? Cleveland offered more. He hates Cleveland. Yes. They fired him. He would never trade him to Cleveland. That's been reported too, yeah. And the second thing is Garoppolo, if he's not traded at the deadline last year, he walks away as a free agent and you don't get anything for him. So I don't think it was a forced trade. I think he, he had to make that trade. Um, an interesting matchup this weekend. There's the, the NFC's got some fascinating games, and Giants Jaguars to me. Jaguars that ain't fascinating. Giants suck. Yeah, you don't like the Giants at all. No, no. You know New York Giants gonna win that football game. No, they're gonna win that. Jacksonville's not very good on the road. You get those warm weather guys. You put them up in Northeast. It's not cold. <laughs> <laughs> it's warm. So you don't like you don't like the Giants. No. And why don't you like them? Well, I think the makeshift shift offensive line that everybody's making a great deal about, average guys. Solder was a good player, but Dante Skarnecki had coached him, and he's the best offensive line coach in football. So New England let him walk. That's number one. The second thing is, you know, Eli is getting older, and they're still trying to force him to play. He don't like getting hit anymore. He never liked to get hit in the first place. The second best pass rushing team in football last year was the Jaguars with 55 sacks. They're going to make him black and blue. And then, you know, now you got a new defense philosophy with Betcher. The one thing on him that I've, that I've heard from players that played for him that they didn't like, his playbook is too big. You can't get good at anything because he throws everything on the wall and expects you to have a great playbook every week. So, I shouldn't say that they suck. I want to take that back, but I don't think they're as good as people what, think they're going to be. Would you have paid OBJ the money? They got the guy back. Yeah, but it's hard when you got to get protected, protect Eli so that he can get OBJ the ball. You know, who else you got? I mean, who's the other outside receiver? You know, that is, it's too many things on offense, and I'm not, I'm not sold on Pat Sherman. You, people, you, you, you put him in Minnesota – 
and you put lipstick on them, but you know, if you take an ugly pig and you put lipstick on them <laughs> and you make them run the ball like they did in Minnesota, you play great, great defense, and now all of a sudden you make this guy head coach again, just look at his record. I'm, I'm not sold on him. I don't, I don't believe So you just don't buy record. the New York Giants at all? No, no. And I think the East is going to be down. I think the NFC East, I think it's Dallas, Philadelphia, Washington may be like fringe playoff team, but this is a two-horse race. It's great having you. Well, I appreciate it. Brian Cox. I got my blazing five coming up. Also, the NFL officials, it's not that difficult. Officiating's not easy, but you keep butchering the replay rule and we'll tell you all you got to do. That's coming up. You know the saying, time is money, and it's true, especially when you run your own business. But running a 